and if we had recognized that, recognized each other, being sovereign individuals, and we were taught to get along and taught to respect one another, then we would have seen that. And that's actually why the teachers don't want the students to talk. They don't want them to, you know, they have absolute totalitarian control. They don't want anybody to talk. I remember being in a stripping room, and my Aunt Mary would just be like, don't you all talk, ever, ever, you know, work, 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 you're a damn machine, shut the fuck up, work, 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 who gives a shit about your life, fuck you. And like, I also remember, you know, she would pay us. She was a little bit better than my own parents who didn't pay us a fucking thing. Um, and, and yeah, I am fucking resentful about this shit, okay? Uh, I, my sisters, they seem to have been able to get out of, you know, sort of the bullshit. But that's because they got flocks of men waiting to have sex with them, right? Well, that's that makes things a lot easier when women love you, when men love you, when everybody's pulling for you to get along. It's kind of hard for daddy to be beating the shit out of you. Um, but he wants to still maintain the dominance, and so he's got their fucking mind and emotional manipulation now. And so, you know, still has to fucking put the oppression on me, and they keep on kissing this fucking ass because the slaves love the massa. The slaves love the oppressed, love their oppressors. They love them. They're probably more out to fight them than they are. Uh, um, uh, um, this makes me think of uh, Malcolm X's house negro, field negro theory. He says the house negro will say, um, we's We's going to go out, boss. We's going to do that. We's going to eat. And if the house is on fire, and he's like, oh, our house is on fire. And um, and the field negro is out in the field having to do all the grunt work and out in the middle of the hot sun. And they're saying, hey, we need to run away and we need to get away. And there was seven. I remember Joey, my cousin, actually ran away. and um, But really, he had hid in the doghouse. And they was like traveling all over trying to find out where he was at. And then that was a big fucking joke. But seriously, you're a fucking Nazi fucking controlling, dictating piece of shit. You don't love me. You just want me to be your fucking slave. You want me to be a clock to a machine. You take away my humanity, my freedom, my dignity. You don't care about my own decisions, my emotions, what I want in this world, my ambitions, my dreams. And you're not teaching me ethics or morality, how to make my own decisions, how to get along with everything else. You taught me nothing. You taught me nothing. You taught me how to be a little order-taking bitch. You taught me how to be, you know, just um, uh, uh, an Uncle Tom feel Negro. So, you, you know, the house Negroes, at least they have some justification. They say, why should we run? When the field Negro says, let's get the hell out of here, the house Negro says, well, why are we going to leave? Why are we going to leave? Where are we going to go that has all these this great food and this great house and this nice, you know, we have it so good here. Why, why should we leave? Harriet Tubman said she would have been able to rescue thousands more slaves had they known that they were even slaves. That's Robert. That's, you know, that's my cousins. This is my cousins. I even had one cousin sit there and say, hey, I'm going to join the Ku Klux Klan. This motherfucker has never got any of the love from his older brothers who he's tried to, you know, um, get their attention so much. And he tries to be such, you know, like them, but he's a decent fucking person. So for him to join the Ku Klux Klan, you know, I, I, I reamed him. I told him exactly what the fuck I felt about it. In fact, I said his family is the blackest family that I've ever known. It was fun going to his house and his family's house. And I didn't realize she was a Nazi um, just like everybody else. But she had like nine kids so you know old woman in a shoe what's she gonna do uh, they all were you know you couldn't always keep them under wraps and under control a hundred percent of the time even though I bet she did have some type of system so there was so much love and it felt so it was a single mother right a single mother sitting there saying do this do that you know I, I, that's, I see black family all over there and um, they have dark skin they have dark complected skin so I bet there is some um, African DNA I got 11% black blood where did it come from my father and my mother they don't give a fuck they actually want to bury that shit right they're I, we're proud to be white ha 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 and anybody that's ever said that's a fucking white supremacist and I don't give a shit yeah, be proud of who you are. Yeah, I remember going to Haiti and they said they really liked my skin. They was like, oh, I like your skin. That's beautiful. And I was like, oh, that's that felt nice. You know, that felt good. Um, that's, you know, you know, my skin color is different than, than theirs. And instead of being like scared of, uh, you know, that type of difference, it was embracing it. And I think black people are beautiful too, you know. So, um... They they were uh, um, you know they were they were house negroes so they didn't want to run and they kind of kept their fucking enslavement up and whereas I'm the field negro and I'm the one that's finding out about my German ha ancestry and my Bohemian and Austrianness and about my you know about just everything of where I came from and everything that I am 
And, and you know, that actually gives me something to, to be proud about. I don't want to be just conformist to all these assholes. I, that doesn't make sense to me, and I guess I'll never, you know, be black. Um, I'm 11% African. I got, you know, black blood in me, and I have black ancestry, so that makes me partially black. And, uh, and I, ta I feel the soul. You know, I got spirituality. I'm expressive. So there's a lot of things that I take from black culture, things that I perceive that black culture has. And uh, I love hip-hop, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, W.B. Du Bois, even Booker T. People want to sit there and say, oh, fuck Booker T. Booker T talked about how to really sort of be like China, you know, basically take over from underneath. Uh, when you're the workers and you control the whole factory, well, the owner is dependent on you. And you get paid by, you know, uh, someone uh, being dependent upon you. So it was frustrating that I stand up to white supremacists and then I go to the to black folks and they just they don't accept me for the exact same reason. Oh yeah, you got a black granddaddy. My fucking white racist cousins wouldn't have liked my black granddaddy. They don't like it. They haven't even fucking you know thought about it. And uh, she didn't like it either. The story about um, at U of L and actually I remember like the, Liz Liz Jones's class social movements. So at University of Louisville, and the, you know, I wish there was a safe space for me. I wish I would be allowed to speak up, and I wish there was wiggle room that if I was to say something wrong, then you know, oh, go ahead and sort of nudge me in the right direction. But it just Malcolm X Debate Club too. It just seemed like oh D, D or whatever that main coach was. It just seemed like she was just like just couldn't wait to, for me to say something like off and be like, that's wrong. No, you're wrong. You don't know what the hell you're t like a king just ready to fucking control over me. And it was bullshit. It was such fucking bullshit, okay? Um, they just didn't want to accept any fucking thing I said. They wanted me that I was watching this uh, one video and it's, you know, I can understand where they're coming from, but if you don't listen to me and if you don't allow me to express myself, then you'll never fucking learn anything. And so actually, I basically said, fuck them. Fuck you. You ain't going to learn shit, motherfuckers. I ain't going to tell you a goddamn thing. You learn nothing. And I felt okay with actually making that decision, you know. Um, I, I didn't have the space to be able to speak up. I couldn't stand up to them. They were terrifying. They were so fucking scary. And, um, and you know, they were fucking shitting on me for saying nothing. And so if I tried to actually say something substantial, they probably would have, you know, been even meaner. So my point is that in Liz Jones' class, this black woman who actually has light skin, she acted very white, very obedient, talk like... Yes, the way I look at things is this, this, and this. And after she shit on me, a white girl kissed her, right? She's like, Mwah. So she's getting white love, right? White ally love, and she's allowed to get kissed and allowed to be able to take things, but she's going to shit all over me. That's a woman thing. That's a man-woman thing. And women have all the power, right? In every heterosexual, in every situation, in every circumstance. I feel as though... Maybe, you know, if they're walking late at night in a dark alley, that's, you know, that's, that's when a woman doesn't have the, the privilege that men have. But even then, I don't feel it's fucking safe walking in a damn alley. I'm going to get fucking raped out here and beat up and shot. No one's going to give a fuck about me. So, even then, even then, I can't even really be on board with it because, and then I'm going to go to prison, right? If I try to defend somebody, if I hurt somebody, or there's an assault, and I, you know, call the police and say, here's what happened. Oh, well, you fuck you, because the cops don't give a shit about you anyways. They'll send you to prison. I was molested by the LMPD. They touched my butthole and they touched my chode, right? And, and no one gives a shit. No one gives a shit. I got molested but at Spalding University. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. You're a man. You're a white man. You're on top. Fuck you. No, that's that's not the case. I'm working class white man. And so if you look at me and you say, oh, well, look at that Ivy League country club middle class suburban knight who's up and above everybody thinks his shit don't stink look at that motherfucker he calls the cops has cops protecting him cops are on his side politicians are on his side you're fucked up you're fucked up in the head you have no idea what the fuck is going on you sound like some of these people in maniac mcgee's book and this is what all this is about, all this is about Maniac McGee. But you sound like the people in the Maniac McGee's book. You have been so polarized all your life, you don't know shit about what I go through. You don't know shit, and you don't even care to learn, to know. Um, it, I mean, my God, it's, uh, I'll, I will say this, because I think this will help any, um, any black, you know, this is just my advice, take it for what it is. 
but I feel whenever I'm driving in traffic, right, okay, so I'm driving and I get cut off. The most aggressive drivers out here are black women. They're the most aggressive drivers out here. I talk, I hear about black women talking about how they beat the shit out of their kids. Malcolm X Debate Club, those black ladies were beating the shit out of their kids. They give me pedagogy of the oppressed, but they didn't realize they were the oppressors. You're clearly the, the fucking oppressors. Do as I say or else, you know, get fucked. Um, they brought a brown skin on board, a brown skin man, I don't even know his fucking name because he was a fucking privileged fucking punk ass, you know, he was raised by doctors, big ass house, he said he didn't even realize he had racism, and you know what, there might have been some institutional racism, but there also could have been tokenism. So he could have been treated better than everybody. You know, the, the white school could have been tolerant or progressive enough that they embraced, you know, a different type of person and they uh, give him lots of privilege. And so what about that? What about brown privilege? What about black privilege? What about feminine privilege? Y'all ignore all these type of privileges? Basically, they wanted to be like, you're privileged. How you feel about that? Hmm? Hmm? You're privileged. Hmm? And it was like... That's that's okay. We could discuss this and to talk about how that applies. But are you just saying I just need to shut the fuck up? You would saying I need to jump off a fucking cliff? What I mean, your advice to me is horrible. So I want to say this: Black women seem very pissed off and angry, and they want to be kings and they want to control over people. I'm a boss, right? I'm a boss. I'm a boss. And because they they will fucking drive themselves absolutely miserable. It's just sort of like well, the um, uh, 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 roll of thunder. Hear my cry. The mother was beating the shit out of all them kids, right? Cassie kept on saying, if you don't do as you say, I'm going to get mother to fucking hit you, right? Well, how did the white people keep black people down? That's a structure of whiteness is violence. And that's one of the main structures of whiteness. How they was able to stay dominant for so many years was through violence. And so, how you, what are you doing to keep you know your kids down? You're using the whip. You're using violence. You're smashing their souls. You don't give a shit about who they actually are. You know, you're not developing the morality or the ethics. You're not teaching them how to get along with each other. There's no freedom. There's no soul. There's no dignity. Um, you know, they're, they're just being blind, obedient, little fucking slaves. Just little bunch of fucking, you know, um, fucking slaves, man. Just fucking, just Kunta Kinte. Or no, the Tobies. They're being fucking Tobies. Black mothers who are really shitty to their fucking kids are creating their kids to be little Tobies. And I think that's bullshit. I think it's fucking bullshit how they treat them. And then, you know, men love their women. So a lot of times I'll see this, you know, I see this with white people too. In fact, I've heard 80 to 90% of America hits their kids in some respects. Hit a kitten or hit a dog, you'll go to jail for that shit, but you could beat the fuck out of your kid all day long. And that's like, oh, well, you know, that's, that's normal, of course. That makes sense. But that don't make sense. You're a piece of shit. If you can hit a fucking kid, I think you should, I don't know, I, I want to say you should have a gunshot to the face because... What what kind of piece of, what kind of piece of shit would hurt a kitten? You know, why would you hurt hurt a kitten? What would you what what kind, what fucked up in this inside your fucking brain would make you hurt a kitten? If you could hurt a fucking that's how Jeffrey Dahmer started out, right? He started killing kittens that wasn't good enough, then he started killing people because you know he had he had the insatiable desire to fucking hurt people, and that's what I see is a lot of sadistic motherfuckers who's like. I just, I just rule, I just schooled you, I just put you in your place, what the fuck are you going to do? Ha <laughs> ha, oh, I'm a sadistic psychopath, I get fucking pleasure off of being shitty to people that don't even deserve to be shitty too. And that's another thing too, <laughs> you know, they're attacking working class white person who's saying I'm ready to fight, I'm ready to put my body into the cogs of the machine. Use me up if you want to, I'm standing by your side, I can't liberate you but I can stand by your side and fight. But you didn't give a shit about that. Liz Jones' class, uh, social movements. It wasn't democratic. It was just a bunch of fucking women that were just fucking obedient to the mass and then shitty to me. There was a joke about being Republican. They all fucking laughed. And I'm more revolutionary and liberal than any of them. So what I was going to say, if you take me serious, you know, the, this would actually help. I think um, I think black women need to be stop, stop being so controlling. Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Emile... There's basically two two thoughts about human nature, okay? And John Jacques Rousseau says the way that we should raise people is um, is by uh, protecting their goodness. If you love your children and you know your babies are good, you need to protect those babies as best as you can. You shouldn't be hitting them. You should be protecting them from getting hit. You know, you should be protecting them from everybody from ever hitting them or doing anything to them. So there's two schools of thought. Hobbes says that it's a war of all against all. That, you know, people are going... I think it's Hobbes. Pretty sure it's Hobbes. I can check it out, but it, I'll check it out later. Um, 
But Hobbes says that it's a war of everybody against everybody. Basically, human nature is this fundamentally evil, and people will fuck you over no matter what just because that's who the fuck people are. And um, and so in that society, you have to smash people into submission and, and fucking get in their face and shit. John Jacques Rousseau, which this is rarely discussed. I tried to discuss this at Spalding University, but you can't talk about education in an education building to education teachers, especially white women, fascist white women who are kings and just try to fucking rule over other people. You can't talk to them. You're not allowed to talk to them. There's no fucking, there's not a safe space anywhere. I wrote a letter to the Cardinal at U of L. You couldn't even talk about education. You know, you couldn't even write a letter to the Cardinal. They made me write it about six or seven times before they eventually published some really fucking ridiculous thing. And that's another thing. My God.